Hello replayers and fellow citizens of YouTube, this is Mr. Ultimate and today is going to be a bit of a departure from my gaming related subject matter. Now, I am displaying a featured game right over there and I promise I'm going to tell you about that featured game, but I'm asking you to bear with me as I talk about fair use and creator rights here on YouTube. Now, this has been a hot topic recently. There's been a massive upsurge in abuses of systems that are in place here on YouTube and actions taken against very high profile channels, channels that are operating within the guidelines set forth by YouTube and within the bounds of fair use. And yet, they have had some very negative actions taken, such as their channels being removed, their videos being removed, monetization taken away. This is not a new subject for anyone who has been a creator on YouTube for any length of time. So I wanna clarify that. This is not just a hot topic. It's affected me, it's affected just about every creator that I know personally, it's affected every creator that I am subscribed to practically. It's affected just about everyone. Almost every channel, no matter what their subject matter, has at one point or another uploaded a vlog explaining what happened to a video, why their channel was offline. So this isn't a new issue, but it is something that's come to a bit of a head because of a huge surge in unjustified actions taken against channels. And something that I have to credit the larger channels for, when these things happen and they talk about them, like, uh, for instance, uh, he's not the only one who has talked about it, but when I Hate Everything channel was taken offline and he had to fight to get it back and he had to raise an uproar, uh, he mentioned the fact that these things happen to small channels all the time, is that they don't have a big enough voice to rally enough people to create as big of a stink as necessary to get these things reversed. So kudos to all of the huge YouTubers who have brought light to that issue as well, because those YouTubers are explaining something that is very critical to why I and I believe every YouTuber should be talking about this, is that this affects all of us, great or small. It doesn't matter. A lot of people think that large YouTubers, people with a few hundred thousand subs, a few million subs, are in a protected class because they're making YouTube a lot of money and thus YouTube is not going to allow anything to mess with that. But that's not true. There are certain channels that have certain protections that aren't really available to everyone else. And um, that's not no fault of their own. Everyone should have those protections, but it's not really extended to everyone. Uh, managed partners get a lot more protection, and there's certain YouTubers, who uh, some of whom are not with multi-channel networks, who get direct protection from YouTube. Uh, I'm not really going to go into who or anything like that because that's not really important. What I want to talk about is why this issue in and of itself is important to talk about. Um, Doug Walker, the nostalgia critic, recently posted a video to Channel Awesome, Where's the Fair Use? And which really thrust the hashtag, hashtag WTFU, into the spotlight. And he encapsulates a lot of the issues that YouTubers face. And he explains it very well because he is very much acquainted with these issues. He deals with this every day, and it is a major stumbling block for his channel, which is mainly a channel to offer criticism of intellectual properties of creative works. So his videos specifically criticize movies, and fair use protects his ability to do that. But when fair use is disregarded, and fair use is not taken into consideration, and the system is automated, and there's no human being there to say, hey, where's the fair use in this? Then bad things happen. So I'm not going to try to summarize his video. Instead, 
it's the suggested video right below me I encourage you to watch it among other videos as well Doug Walker does a very good job of explaining things from the perspective of a creator here on YouTube there's another video that I think is just as important and I would encourage you to watch and that is a video by Leonard French copyright attorney on hashtag WTFU where's the fair use he goes into a lot more detail about fair use what it is and why it's important and really frame the issue a lot better than I could I'm a layman I've learned a lot about fair use because I need to so I've gone to people who are a lot smarter on this subject than I have and found out what my rights are and where my rights stop so uh, there are specific things that you need to do to remain within fair use and again I would rather let someone who is an attorney explain those things but uh, just to give a, a brief example uh, I mentioned Doug Walker the nostalgia critic Originally, he used small portions of movies, much less so recently, because he's just trying to avoid as many claims as possible. But originally, he used small clips of movies to provide some context for the criticism that he was giving. And a lot of internet movie critics do the same thing here on YouTube. Uh, you know, Red Letter Media, I Hate Everything, Your Movie Sucks. Uh, many 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 creators that I could never come close to listing all of them so um, when he's doing that he's creating a video whose intended purpose is not to convey uh, the experience of watching the movie that he's criticizing it's to convey his opinions and his criticism for entertainment value and because of that his criticism and his video which is based on an existing work but operating within fair use in and of itself will become a new original creative work because I'm not gonna go to a nostalgia critic video to watch a movie I'm going to go there to watch Doug Walker as the character of the nostalgia critic presenting opinions in a way that's going to make me laugh whether I agree with them or not so I want to know what his opinion is because I like the way his opinion is presented to me it's entertaining to me so that is his creative work it's built upon something else but that's fair use he's creating something new and original by building upon something else you know he's not interfering with that original works ability to be monetized in and of itself he is not replacing the original purpose of that which you would be doing if you took say the entire Deadpool movie and uploaded it in its entirety to YouTube without any kind of editing without any kind of commentary without any kind of constructive criticism that's not fair use that is outright theft same thing as if you took a popular song and or just let's say the entire album if you took an entire album and just uh, put up some pretty pictures that somebody's not going to pay attention to anyway and you had the song strung together and you gave them the experience of having the album without having to purchase the album that's outright theft what a lot of creators are doing on YouTube uh, is not that they're operating within fair use building upon other creative works to create something new so uh, once again though for a much better context and explanation from someone who is a professional who has a degree in these things and is specialized in it and uh, who basically is a copyright attorney I encourage you to look at Leonard French's video I also think that there is another video out there by another internet movie critic that is very important that I encourage you to watch also and that is by Decker Shadow hashtag WTFU and concerns for potential results of potential results I'm sorry um, his video talks about a different issue most of the people participating in the conversation 
about where's the fair use are talking about YouTube itself changing their system to balance the scales a little bit because it so heavily favors large companies and owners of intellectual property and it so heavily favors and allows for abuses of creator rights and disregard for fair use it's so easy to do that it needs to change you know I agree with that YouTube needs to get on the ball stop relying on automation actually as I said a long time ago I think it was my first vlog on content ID it was like the first video or the second video that was uploaded to this channel um, I said it a long time ago and I still stand by it they need actual human beings they need to put you know people in seats hire them real people with flesh and blood and bone and and cognitive abilities to actually look at these kind of claims there needs to be a point where we say okay you're going to issue uh, a DCMA takedown let's take a look at this before you do it did you consider fair use the court says you have to consider fair use first did you do it I don't think you did so uh, why don't before you take this action you take another look at this and you explain to us how they're operating outside of fair use and then if you do that take it down that is your right if it's valid if you have a valid argument that this is outside of fair use take it down and then they will have to appeal it and prove their side of things but before we let you just blatantly take down someone else's work you have to prove that it is infringing on your rights as an intellectual property owner that's very important Decker Shadow brought up something else the other side of the coin something that should be part of the conversation that we should all be talking about is that outside of YouTube because YouTube is just one company so what YouTube does does not affect Vimeo daily motion twitch anybody else it only affects YouTube it could set a precedent but not one that people have to follow so outside of YouTube any actions YouTube take doesn't really have an effect also YouTube could always just change the policy it can change the policy at any time it's written in to all of their agreements that they can change it at any time so what really needs to happen in addition to getting YouTube to change its systems is that we collectively whether you are a viewer of streaming media or a creator of streaming media we need to lobby our lawmakers no matter where you are not just talking about US lawmakers lawmakers everywhere we should be lobbying them to protect creator rights you know not just the original creators and in fact many times the owners of the intellectual property are not the original creators but people who make derivative works that operate within fair use people who are building upon existing structures to create new things those are things that we need to do we need to lobby our lawmakers let them know that it is important to us you know hopefully if you're watching this video you live somewhere where you have the ability to participate in free elections you need to let your lawmakers know that this affects the decisions you might make at the poll maybe it's not something that would swing your vote but it's something that would factor in I hope it is because fair use is just a way of protecting free speech if we can't criticize a movie that's just a stone's throw away from not being able to criticize an idea not being able to criticize a government agency not being able to criticize a religious institution it's a slippery slope and I certainly don't want to start sliding down that slope 
I hope you don't as well. So I encourage you not only to look at the videos that I've suggested here, not only to share the videos that I've suggested here, but I encourage you to join this conversation. Add your ideas to it. Criticize the ideas that we as content creators who are promoting this hashtag WTFU and this hashtag creator rights. Criticize our ideas. Find out where our ideas are weak and think about and talk about ways we could shore up those weaknesses and strengthen these ideas. Find out who your representatives are. Find out who the people who make your laws are and talk to them. Express your ideas to them. Maybe one person can't make a difference in this situation, but one person along with another person, along with another person, along with another person, multiplied exponentially. Speaking unified could make a difference. Now, I cannot in any way, shape, or form guarantee that we will make a difference. But I can guarantee you is that if we let this issue fall silent, nothing will change. That I can guarantee you. Thank you so much for putting up with this explicitly non-gaming related content. I appreciate it so much. So now, let me tell you about today's featured game. Today's featured game is Dead Effect 2, which was sent to me by indie developer Badfly Interactive. This is, of course, the sequel to the first Dead Effect, so players of that game will find a lot of familiar mechanics. It is very similar enough for you to be able to slide right in and keep on playing, but there are a lot of new mechanics and new changes and things that were added to the game. So it's not like it's just an expansion of the first game, it is a proper sequel that builds upon what has come before. Now a lot of people like to compare this to Doom or Dead Space and I totally get that. Uh, there are sci-fi shooters, they have uh, horrific monsters that you're fighting, uh, there's dark and gloomy environments, uh, there has a bit of a horror feel even though I really don't consider this a horror game mainly because I have a big gun and I know how to use it and without that feeling of helplessness I really can't get in that horror mode I'm more in the first-person shooter mode that uh, I guess you could say that does harken back all the way back to doom where there are worse monsters surrounding you, but you had this gun and you were just going to blaze through them and blast through them. Now, it is a little bit more difficult than that. You do need to manage your ammo. You need, do need to be careful. Uh, the monsters do ramp up in difficulty and in strength. There are special monsters and special zombies with abilities that you need to figure out what they are and figure out the best way to defeat them or else if you just go in guns blazing, you're probably going to die a lot. Also, there's a lot of gear and items to collect in this game, over a hundred pieces of gear and lots of gear sets, uh, even some very cool rare gear sets that you can collect. And also there's over 30 special abilities that you can unlock and add to your character. You wanna be kind of choosy in how you spend your points and use the abilities that are available to you to develop a gameplay style that will work best for you. Now, as always, the download link is going to be down there in the description below if you want to check out Dead Effect 2 for yourself, which I highly recommend. This is a very well-made, competent, well-received first-person shooter. It's got a mostly positive score on Steam right now, and it earns it, so go ahead and check it out. Okay replayers, thank you so much for watching today's vlog. If you'd like to check out today's featured games or any of the things that I mentioned today, be sure to check out the links in the description below. If you'd like to see more of my content, check out the videos to my left, and if you want to see what's going on on the ExtendedReplay.com channel, check out the videos to my right. If you're in the mood to be surprised, then there's a mystery video by a member of the XRP crew, so check that out to find out who it is today. Also, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to smash that like
like button and hit subscribe so you can see all the videos I'm going to be bringing you very, very soon. In the meantime, I pray that you all love one another and until next time, I remain Mr. Ultimate.